A couple months ago, we started refreshing our primary bedroom. We've had it pretty much the same from when we bought it, which was several years ago. It's been a bit tiring looking at the same four gray walls, but that's all about to change. Previously, we ripped up the carpet and swapped it for new floors. I tried a dozen lime wash paint colors and I picked out my favorite. Then I narrowed down a stain for us to get started with a tongue and groove wood beam ceiling. Hey everybody, it's Sarah Lee over at House & Co. I've been eagerly waiting to release this new video. You're probably wondering what happened. It's been a few weeks since we talked about where we are at and I had a lot of audio issues on recording, adding any VO to my videos and it sounded so muffled even from the last video. I was hearing some muffling but only for like little parts but it only got worse but I finally got everything working and we're ready to talk about the next stage of our bedroom makeover which is talking about the tongue and groove wood beam ceiling. We last left off just looking at stains, picking out, narrowing it down and so that's where we're going to be picking off today. I don't know if I showed you a close-up of all of the stains that I tried. There was only, this was like the main colors I had placed on the pine board to compare and see what it looked like. Um, and then I tried some of those variations differently here at the bottom. And then this board here were like the final, I think those were like the final three that I tried out and this is the one I went with. Kind of just showing different variations with like weathered oak and white pickling. So here's a bit of a close-up. I'm not sure if you can see the color. It's called Tamarind by Bear. I've been just calling it Tamarindo because that's what it is in Spanish. So I thought it was perfect, honestly, because the Tamarindo color, I was a little bit worried because I thought there was some orange or reddish. And I think there's a little bit of yellow, which I don't mind the yellow better that than orange or reddish um but I'm loving this color and then when I added the weathered um oak on top which is a gray finish it kind of gave it like a tamarindo maduro so basically a tamarind that has matured this is what we're going to be calling this panel After three days of wood picking, half a dozen Home Depots, and countless times we were digging through those boards, we must have gone through a hundred boards at least. We found what we could of the best of the best, um, but the difficulty we were coming across was trying to find pine wood, tongue and groove, that was not as knotty, so looking for boards that didn't have as many wood knots. I don't know if you've ever seen ceilings with, you know, pine. Um, some of them can have a very like naughty look. Like it just feels like when you're especially staining those, they feel like a stop and go and they don't look as smooth as like white oak. Of course, if I had the funds, I would probably be buying up white oak, but we're gonna try what we can with a pine wood. Luna's actually done half the work of sanding everything down to, uh, we use 80 grit and then 220 for that smooth finished look. And now we're ready to stain. Because the boards are 12 feet long, I really don't have space to stain anywhere else but in the living room. Everything is now cleared out and I'm laying down plastic to protect the surrounding areas because I know this is gonna get messy. So this is a bit new to me. This is a staining pad. You can easily connect it to like a broomstick or a painter stick, which I have a few painter sticks. So I'm going to do that. Um, but I've always been using a rag when I'm staining my projects just because I don't like to use a paintbrush because I like to control how much stain I'm getting on there and more evenly. Well, I don't know about evenly, but I have a better control. Um, so I got this one, but I also got one from Mini Wax, which I didn't know they sold those. I just saw them at Lowe's um, earlier today when I went. And so I grabbed a couple, so we're going to give it a try. So this is the other staining pad that I found from Mini Wax, which I feel like this one is a lot more plush, but it also has the broomstick or paint stick um, insert here that you can place inside. So if you guys already have one at home, so I'm going to use this one for the main stain. I'm going to start off with using pre-stain. It will help with an even coat and absorption of the main stain. For this, I used a blue stain pad to apply it on, but I eventually switched out and applied it with a brush. The pad seemed to leak quite a bit and it was just making it harder. After brushing on the pre-stain to the entire plank, I went back to wipe off the excess almost immediately after covering the entire plank, and then waited about 20 minutes for it to completely dry. 
Next, we were ready to add the main stain color. It's a bare custom color that you can ask for at the Home Depot's Paint Clerk Desk. It doesn't cost more or anything else. They just have a whole nother set of colors that are not the most commonly asked, but they are truly worth exploring. When applying with a Minwax staining pad, I was shocked how well it applied onto a plank. I could swipe the stain in one go with no leaks. This is by far one of the best staining tools I've ever used and I would highly recommend it. After staining 35 planks and some extra just in case, the next day I was able to apply Verithane Weathered Oak Stain. For this, I was using Minwax Shorter Staining Pad, which is basically like the larger one, just shorter in scale. I'm applying Weathered Oak to make the boards look a little darker, but also to add an aging look to it. I came up with this color to help best match with our current Pergo floors that are an oak wood laminate. Here's a comparison of the color difference. On the left, we have the tamarind without the Weathered Oak and on the right with it. So here's a close up of the boards. I actually love the color and how it came out and the whole selection process, but the pine wood is what's killing me here. I don't know if you can tell some of these right here have these like almost, the, the color just didn't go in. Like there was almost like another layer that just resisted. Well, that, um, all those wood flares did show up in like all of this little bunch and I selected the ones that came out like perfect. So I don't know if I should like mix it in or what, but maybe in the ceiling you won't notice. For anyone else out there selecting pine tongue and groove, what you want to look for are boards that have a more narrow closed wood flares. That's been my preference because it takes the stains more evenly than the larger wood flares. On the left you have a plank with almost no wood flares, where on the right they're pretty noticeable and large. There are some that are narrower in wood flares, and I'll show you guys after what that looks like. For some reason, even after standing as much as I did and adding pre-stain, the wood flares in some were just a hassle. But I think I'm just picky, but I hope that tip helps when wood picking. While I was staining, Luna was making all the beams. All the beams were made with 1x6 inch pine common board. 8 out of 9 beams were trimmed down to 2 inches down on the sides, making it a 4 inch width versus 6 inch to make smaller 6x4 beams. Using a table saw, you rip the boards at a 45 degree angle, and you assemble them together adding a few support braces made of 1x2s. To get this measurement, you measure the ends of the beams to get the size you need. Once you have all of your trimmed pieces, you're ready to glue it all together. To hold the beam in place, it helps to have a lot of clamps. I've seen some add tape to the beam edges connecting them to hold it together. So there's a few ways to do this. Next, with a brad nailer, nail along the beam edges and support braces. Honestly, you can go wrong with adding more nails, so do so. After the beam is assembled and while the wood glue is still wet, you can use a curve of a wood chisel to fold the corners of the wood beam edges inward into each other to reduce the amount of wood filler later needed. Aim the chisel upward then downward to make sure both of the beam edges get folded in. This is a pretty cool tip to get your beams to look like a solid piece without anyone else knowing the difference. Not sure if you can see it well here, but the beam edge is closed in, except for the slightest gap here that is open. It turned out pretty good otherwise for no filler. And then for any gaps, just add some wood filler, but hopefully it's a minimal amount, and then just sand. In total, nine beams were made. Eight of them were six by four beams, and the middle one was a bit bigger with no trimming at six by six. Four out of nine beams are the side beams, which will have an open panel that will go against the wall, so it only needs two boards instead of three to make a beam. I'm excited to tell you guys that today is the day that we're going to be adding the tongue and groove to the ceiling and add the wooden beam support, just like the back plate that we created today as well. In hopes that we finish the two things, I'll be able to stain the beams that Luna finished up yesterday and be able to install them tomorrow so that we can hopefully finish up the ceiling in these two days here, which I'm excited because I haven't seen the color of the tongue groove almost since three weeks ago, so it's hard to remember. I remember I felt a little uneasy, but I know it takes time for the stain to settle, so I'm gonna be seeing it for the first time on the ceiling today, which is nerve wracking, but exciting. So we'll see, because I've been really anxious about it, because I said if it didn't work out, the stain color, I would paint it. I don't want to paint it, but if it doesn't look good, I won't go that mile, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. With the beams ready to install-ish, minus the stain, we took down the fan to clear the area. I can't say I will miss it. It was on its last legs and I'm surprised it never fell off the ceiling. Right after, we started running a 2x4 along the slanted crease. This creates a support brace for the beams later to adhere to using 3-inch screws on each wall stud. 
Depending how long your ceiling is, you might have to extend your 2x4 like we did. After adding your brace, it's a good idea to test fit your beam to make sure there's enough space for it to adhere onto the 2x4 and seeing how much overhang there will be covering the tongue and groove planks. After the beams are assembled, it's stain time. I'm using the same method here as I did with the tongue and groove. I'm using bare water-based pre-stain and if you remember, I ditched the blue staining pad for a brush. It's way easier to apply and then immediately wipe after. I usually do one side at a time. After 20 minutes of drying, I stained the beam with bare tamarind soon after. If you didn't know, pre-stain has a window of use, so don't wait too long. I applied the stain with Minwax staining pad and wiped off the excess soon after. Optional, you could do two coats of tamarind, but I only did one. At a glance, here's how they look without the weathered oak yet to be applied. After the bare tamarind stain dries, which I waited overnight because I was quite tired that day, I applied Varathin Weathered Oak. For this stain, you definitely want to have the windows open and rush to wipe off the excess immediately, otherwise it will look too gray. After all the bazillion prepping tasks were done, it's finally install day. The one thing I forgot to capture was how we located the wall studs across the ceiling, but you can figure we just used a stud finder and we used a laser beam to line up the bottom and top studs. We drew straight lines across the ceiling to make sure we applied the brad nails in those areas. It's crazy to think that you only need brad nails, right? Everything was going pretty well up to the sixth plank and then it was giving us some trouble to try to insert one into another, but Luna had the brilliant idea to grab the floor tapping block and tap them into each other, and it worked. It took us about two days to install, starting mid-afternoon on both days. We just had to trim one plank into two to cover the narrow space in between the 2x4. And for reference, the tongue and groove wasn't long enough wall to wall, so there's gaps, but the beams will cover that. Inserting the narrow planks near the 2x4 was only possible with a rebar for a tight fit. You just gotta get in there and press against it to move it down a bit. Afterwards, we're ready to install the middle beams, which is really two beams because the room is so wide. If I ever regretted not going more often to the gym and weightlifting, it was this day. I honestly thought I was going to pass out because it was somewhat heavy, and I was just recovering being sick from a couple of weeks ago. Luna is a real muscle here. He pushed on and pre-drilled and drilled 3-inch screws into the beam to connect them to the 2x4 support brace. Next, to add the sidewall beams, you have to add a 2x4 support brace onto the studs. Then you can pre-drill and drill the screws in from the beam to the brace. Then you're probably wondering, how did we find those angles? For angled beams, which is a bit tricky, you can use an angle measuring tool to calculate your beam cuts. Have the tool flush against the wall angle and then after, mark it up onto the beam and cut it with a miter saw. The challenge of working with a slanted wall means you have to find the angles of those beams and not mess it up. For our first time attempting tongue and groove and beam making, it's turning out pretty good. To temporarily hold up the beams before pre-drilling, you can also use brad nails to hold up the beams against the support brace, and then resume as normal to pre-drill the 3-inch screws. Next, a clear coat was needed for the ceiling. Ideally, I should have added a clear coat to the tongue and groove planks and beams before installing them, but I was a little bit too excited to wait after a lot of delays in between. Either way, you still have to add a clear coat after installation, but getting one coat out of the way would have been better. The reason you want to add a coat beforehand is so that you can add wood filler with a better ease to wipe it off without smudging your stain. Once your first clear coat is completely dry, add the wood filler and allow it to dry completely. Then with a damp towel, you can easily wipe it off without any smudges. Cool tip, right? Then afterwards, you seal it with one more clear coat to seal the wood filler as well. Circling back around to picking the best tongue and groove pine wood, the best planks in my opinion were these narrow closer line wood flares with hardly any knots. Some that had larger wood flares turned out nice, but others just didn't want to soak up the stain and left some brighter flares. I ended up mixing all the boards together so it would look less noticeable that there were some that were just not the best looking than clumping them all together. Hope that gives a better explanation what to look out for. And here's a final look of our tongue and groove wood beam ceiling.
Fast forwarding to present day, we've had the tongue groove we've been sitting up for about two weeks now, and we're both pretty happy how it turned out. I was kind of anxious, and I know I was kind of joking, but not when I said I was going to paint it. I just felt like sometimes I was just like, I don't know if this is going to look good. And you never know until you have everything up, just because like a small swatch just never does it justice. You have to see everything together, but I'm happy that everything did work out. The entire project probably took us about two months, but there was a lot of breaks in between. In that time, Luna took some vacation, which is about two weeks, a week and a half. We both got sick with different things. And if anything did take us the longest was prep work. And part of that prep work was trying to find the right wood for the tongue and groove. Everything is pine, but the tongue and groove, I was really picky with those wood knots that I was seeing. We probably went to 10 to 12 Home Depots and probably saw over 200 boards. And I mean, that's how committed I was to trying to find wood that I was going to be happy with the results of the staining process, just because I know that pine can really have that knotty look. But I'm happy with the results and I'm actually just looking at it right now and just admiring it. So I'm happy that that's finally done and that we can move forward. On the next video, I'm really excited to show you guys the process of texturing, well not texturing, but show you guys how I long wash our textured walls, which I actually already did get started. So I'm excited to show you guys that soon. So don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned. And thank you again for watching.